baby doll at Chelsea. You recognize all those people from your class. I said I would stop, but I can't. I don't know why. <sighs> the joys of doing this. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone on the non-binary spectrum, I am Hexley, and I need to explain something. So, the fourth episode you're gonna see is gonna be a bit different for this. It's gonna be a bit different than the episode two and three of this, which you'll see, because thanks to technical difficulties and partially my own stupidity, I have to, uh, both episode two and episode three are gone. So at first it was only episode two and I was like gonna be like well okay maybe I just won't do that maybe I'll just skip and explain but then episode three messed up and I was like ah I was like whatever just <laughs> just re-record episode two and three and the reasons I have so many reservations about it was because <laughs> I like it better when I do things and then it's like oh this is gonna be my first reaction to them but I don't know because because a lot of things happen, I won't say, but I will recap the first episode because, so, so from episode two and three, Kenya is going to look a little different, and episode four, well, no, Kenya is going to look different on episode four, two and three is going to be what she is now, because I had to replay the story, so, thankfully I didn't even get far, <laughs> so it wasn't like, you know, too much to do, but yeah, last episode, recap, we... We're the new girl, we're the new dorky girl, we had a terrible first day because the mean girl, like, hella mocked us. And <laughs> then we we had a best friend, then, you know, whatever, that's in the past now. Then our fairy godmother or god came, which was the author of the story, and she's like, oh, I'll let you have a restart and stuff like that. And so we got to remake Kenya, and she looks better <laughs> I should say and um then we restarted our school day we had a better first day than last time and then at the end of the school day we got a note saying meet us at the school entrance of course by now because I've already played four episodes but I have to re record two and three just to show what happens because it's way too much of a gap just to be like oh well just skip it so I know what I know where I'm going, but it's like eh. <laughs> I was trying to make this the best I can, even though I'm really upset about it. Episode two: Secret Meetings. Be at the entrance at midnight. Oh, who could who could have sent that? Fifteen thirty. What is it about yesterday's cold pizza that makes it even more appetizing the next day? Ah, I don't know, cause I like pizza when it comes in. I mean, there's nothing wrong with refrigerated pizza, but, you know, it's like when you first get it, it's the best. Refrigerated pizza is the second best. That's just my opinion, though. Some of them might like it at where you know, refrigerated pizza. What if whoever sent that note has set up cameras and is patiently waiting for me to show up and humiliate myself? 1705 Which daydream scenario should I go with this time? The one where the hot guy climbs up to my climbs up my window to talk to me? Maybe the one where I am, am undressing with the door slightly open and our hot neighbor is looking for the bathroom and... What if whoever owns that free candy red van also <laughs> passes around mysterious notes to lure young girls into his trap and turn them into prey? That is a possibility. 2009. How to eliminate cellulite. Get a big bum and a flat stomach with just one cream. From the company, just one cream. <laughs> Sounds reliable. Let's check it out. Let's see. User comments. User comments. Oh, hi. There we go. I don't know why I said hi there. Whatever. Totally not paid by company commented. I just bought just one cream and I'm already madly in love with this with the product. <laughs> you just have to apply it everywhere like you would apply peanut butter on a slice of bread. Cover yourself with a towel. Bury yourself in bed sheets, mummify yourself, turn yourself into a burrito, comfortably lay there for an hour and and a half, and voila! Your bikini body is there, waiting for you to show it off. I know this is important, but how many people within this within the story universe actually 
went and got that cream because of that comment. <laughs> Whatever its body type you have, just one cream will turn you into a perfect hourglass figure in just an hour and a half. If you're not pleased with this product, 15 minutes after your purchase, just one cream will totally give you your money back. Guarantee success, guys! Now if you excuse me, I have to finally reply to those modeling agency job offers. Don't waste any time, guys. Seriously. Buy it now. Interesting. Do they have any before or after pics? You know they don't. What if Bob, the bully from my old school, finally learned to write without spelling every word the wrongest way possible and is currently planning his revenge on me after I refuse to explain to him how to write his name during the math exam? Calm down, Kenya. That is practically impossible. <laughs> That's so mean. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing either. Let's see, how many words did that note have? Be at the entrance at midnight. Oh no. These words don't even give him the opportunity to spell anything wrong. Then again, he didn't know how Bob is spelled. He would have at least written, written He would have at least written entrance with an S. Or midnight with a double E. I know it has me completely paranoid. 2330. What if our old neighbor's cat on which I accidentally stepped on once learned to communicate with humans and hired an escape convict to... I'm pretty sure I'm freaking out for nothing. Dude, that would've been awesome. <laughs> okay, not, not awesome for me. Not awesome for Kenya, but, you know, it still would've been cool. You stepped on me, therefore... Like, a cat wants vengeance so much it learned how to talk with humans and it managed to hire an escape convict to do its dirty work. Because cats! I mean, honestly... I mean, if that escape convict was like, well, yeah, it was totally a cat that asked me to do it. No one would, like, doubt him. Would anyone, like, really doubt the escape convict? Because by now, everyone knows cats. <laughs> Go do some of the dirtiest stuff. And it's just like... Wow. This realization doesn't make this whole situation any less frightening, though. Great, now I need to get ready. What should I wear? Um, I about just got out of bed. Nah. Nah, I don't like that one. Totally spy. I don't remember the outfits, because I just chose the first outfit. Sure, let's do that one. Last uh, last time I tried, I recorded this, I chose uh, chose uh, the third option, and I saw the witness the shoes, and I was disappointed. <laughs> Oops, forgot my phone. Oops, I forgot my guts. <laughs> Game face. Found them. Just someone pops out. Hello. Poof. Just pop, pop in, the, in the face. Totally not freaking out. Totally not freaking out. I see you're on time. Ah! I hate it, people. I hate it when people are late. You! Yeah, yeah. I was in your class this morning. I'm glad you remember. <laughs> she just flies on the screen. <laughs> Hey, hey! Ah! Speaking of things I hate. Alcino. Harrier. Alcino. Harrier. Sorry for interrupting whatever's going on here. But, like, aren't you the school nurse? Like, totally, at first when she said that, I was freaking out because I didn't even recognize her. The one who forcefully drew blood without my consent? Yeah, that's not cool. If you're gonna take someone's blood, make sure they consent to it. That's proper vampirism. I mean, I say vampire because I don't know. Okay, it's proper vampirism and doctorism. Whatever. Oh, come on. Don't be such a crybaby. You'll understand everything soon enough. I'm looking forward to that. Great, shall we get going?
cinematic view I didn't know that was possible Play some awesome mysterious music And then this scene will be set Unless it's playing and I don't hear it So you walk across the hallway I'm sorry, I'll stop You enter the library I lied <laughs> You observe Al Snowy, you arrange some of the books on a shelf. <laughs> Harry bursts out laughing at the <laughs> I'm sorry. Harry bursts out laughing at the sight of your confused face. Windows innocent look at shelves turn out to be a secret door. You walk down the deck down <laughs> What? I was about to say tank. You walk down the dark, scared haze, leaving behind the secret door. I'm adding in words, I don't know why. You find yourself in what appears to be a dusty, abandoned basement. You walk across the basement hallway. Alcindor opens the door on your right. And inside, and suddenly you find yourself in a room full of life. I'll stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Baby Doll and Chelsea. You recognize all those people from your class. I said I would stop, but I can't. I don't know why. And that you observe the strangely decorated. I'm sorry. I'll really stop now. I'll really stop. Hey, is that a magic? Stop! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was like part of my brain that just didn't want to stop. <laughs> hey, is that a magic wand? It looks like this room is for used for teaching, but you can't imagine what kind of subjects could be taught in this place. Obviously, math and creepy doll 101. Is that a doll sitting next to the back blackboard? It's obviously the teacher's assistant. Different people are captivated by different objects in the room. Apparently, even those yucky jars over there can be captivating for some, whatever their mysterious content is. Medusa! Everyone here seems to be getting it along. Wait, what? That guy has horns on his head. So that's this is why he was wearing that ugly beret on, at school. You have no idea what's going on, but suddenly you feel excited to be a part of it. I know, right? I would be excited. And I look cute while being excited this time. I don't look like a hot mess with them ugly shoes. <laughs> Sorry, they were ugly. Gather up, people. We have a meeting. <laughs> I'm sure you all know your new classmate, Kenya Swallow. <laughs> well, her blood results came back, and she's one of us. <laughs> Woo! One of you? I'm not sure I understand. One step at a time. You'll understand soon enough. At least now you know now why I violated you so ruthlessly. Uh... It's very gross to say. That's very creepy, and I don't want to stay next to you. Honestly, I really don't. I still don't want to stay next to you. Hearing it twice does not make it nice. And selfishly, apparently. <laughs> not at all. You'll see, everything is much easier when you're surrounded by people like you. People like me. The supernaturals. The what? Don't act so surprised. This is a teen movie we're in. I'm trying to go for a sultry-like voice for a good reason. And in this day and age, every teen movie that respects itself contains some supernatural elements. I guess. I still don't get how this movie is supposed to go wrong, though. One step at a time. We haven't even introduced ourselves properly yet. I'm Asuno, Nymph of the Rivers. A naiad. I think that's what that word is, to be precise. 
I'm the leader of the Angelics, the kids who are wearing white and blue uniforms. Hi! Do take it. Excuse me. Our group consists of the majestic beings of mythology, the ones that have rel a relatively good reputation and are respected and admired by everyone. I'm Harrier, a siren and a professional seducer. <laughs> wow, you mean you're a real mermaid? No, idiot, she says siren. Well, you think all creatures that seduce men and eat them alive look alike? That's prejudice against supernatural beings. Not Harrier. I forgot her name, Kenya. Oh my god. <laughs> Does anyone read mythology anymore? I do. No, honey, I'm not a mermaid. I'm a siren. You know, wings instead of arms, legs of birds, body of a gorgeous woman, a voice to die for. Yeah, I thought those were harpies, though. Maybe it's just the games I played depict them like that. A lot of the times games I play, they depict harpies like, well, not just the game, like everything. Just kind of depict harpies like like these bird-like creatures that have, they can sing, but sirens get like, you know, they get more of the sexualized treatment. But you look normal. That's because I'm in my human form, silly. Everyone here is. Although not everyone here can hide their true identity as well as I do. <laughs> you know I love you, Panty. So, do sirens have magical powers or something like that? Oh, of course we do. We sing our enchanting melodies and sailors can't help but sail our way, craving for more. And then we devour them. You what? Do I so repulse your majesty? Those good-for-nothings have wives and children waiting at home, while they're busy chasing after every charming female they encounter. I'm pretty sure that poor piglet you ate for dinner was pretty innocent, though. What? She's a vegan now? I mean... Kinda? If she only eats people, I think that kinda does mean- well, I don't know. No, I don't think that means because you're eat still eating meat. Get to the point, Harrier. So, I'm the leader of the demonics, the kids wearing black and red uniforms. Hey! Do to get day. Our group consists of the misunderstood creatures of mythology. Those who were portrayed as monsters or villains and are feared by most mortals. But I can assure you, in our group, you'll find the loveliest people you'll ever meet. That's actually true. The names of the groups can be a bit misleading. These groups were not formed based on the no notions of good and evil. After all, we're all pretty much corrupted, as you'll soon find out. So, it's time for you to meet your new fellow supernatural classmates. Let's start with the Angelics. I'm Griffin, king of all creatures. King of all creatures, my ass. As small as your penis, stiffen. Still bigger than your height, panty dear. <coughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. Do you want to learn more about Griffin? Sure. I didn't do this in like the first time I recorded it because... But I'll do it now. The griffin is a legendary creature whose external characteristics include body, uh, body parts of a lion, body, tail, and back legs, and body parts of an eagle, head, wings, and front legs. Part, because the lion is thought of as the king of beasts and the eagle is as the king of birds, the griffin is considered to be the king of all creatures and is the most powerful and is the powerful guardian of treasures. You can search griffin on Wikipedia for more information. I'm Phoenix, the eternal symbol of life and resurrection. There's gonna be too many characters. I'm not gonna be able to make voices for everyone. I'm not gonna be able to remember them well, so, you know, a lot of them are just gonna be up in the air. Especially the dudes. Do you want to know more about Phoenix? Yes. The Phoenix is a Greek mytholo mythological creature that regenerates from its ashes after its death. 
It is portrayed as a red and yellow bird with a crest of feathers on its head, surrounded by a radiant halo. It is often associated with the sun and life in general. You can search Phoenix on Wikipedia for more information. A Pegasus, the divine stallion. Sure. Pegasus is a Greek mythological creature who was portrayed as a white-winged horse. He was ridden by the Greek mytholo mythological hero Bellerophon in order to slay the monster Chimera. He serves as a symbol of wisdom, fame, and poetry. You can search Pegasus on Wikipedia for more information. Fun fact, he is also my son. Your son? Just how old are you? Most of us are much older than we look. Pegasus is the son of Poseidon and Medusa. He was born after, Gre after Greek mythological hero Perseus chopped Medusa's head off. <laughs> but let's leave, let's leave that story for later. I'm Tegete, but you can call me Tay. Uh, this is actually the blonde chick with the has the blonde mohawk. I'm also a nymph, one of the pe Pleiades, to be precise, who are the sidekicks of goddess Artemis. I am also known as the mistress of animals. Yes, let's learn more about our dearest Tegete. Do Tegete! I'm sorry. Tegete's story is a common one in Greek mythology. Basically, our boy Zeus, who was feeling particularly excited again, Tegete is, as you can see, a fairly attractive young woman, and our boy had the hots for her. Tegete wasn't particularly into him, probably due to his reputation as the Lord of Fuckboys. <laughs> Call him out. So she asked her girl Artemis to help her avoid him. Thus, Artemis turned Tegete into a doe with golden horns. You can search Tegete on Wikipedia for more information. I'm Cupid, the god of love. More about Cupid? Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure that Valentine's Day merchandise has already taught you all you need to know about him. Well, yeah. Except for the fact that in Magritte's mythology, he was portrayed as a slender young man. And not a chubby baby. Well, I mean, that makes sense. You can search Cupid for on Wikipedia for more information. I'm Circe, the Enchantress. Well, yes. Circe is a witch in Greek mythology. Hey, witchcraft. Woo. She was known for using her magic potions and her magic wand in order to transform people who pissed her off into animals. <laughs> She's proud of that. She lives in a mansion in the woods. That is the way to do life. Mansion in the woods. Probably got Wi-Fi and everything. Which was guarded by lions and wolves, a.k.a. the poor guys who fell into her trap. Odysseus is gang over for dinner. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. <laughs> Apparently, she is a passionate supporter of the phrase, all men are pigs. Which is why she's literally turned Odysseus' men into pigs. But Odysseus' biggest fangirl, Athena, was there to save his ass once again by sending him her boy Hermes to help him out. Hermes gave him some molly with one L, I repeat, one L, in order to make him resistant to Circe's magic. Result, Odyssey's got his gang back, a great meal out of the deal, and a hot girlfriend for an entire year. Talk about serious marketing skills. Now, I bet you're wondering, how exactly is Cersei part of the Angelics? I mean, I get your point, but... But... Would you look at that face? Plus, when Odyssey was ready to go back to his wifey after sleeping with Cersei for an entire year... Wow. <laughs> she proved herself really helpful by giving him directions that would guide him back to Ithaca. Mythology! Gets stranger for every story you read. Gotta love it. Thus, we can conclude that she is someone you'd want to have on your side. You can search for Circe on Wikipedia for more information. Moving on to the demonics. I am the Merciless Sphinx. Yes. The Sphinx is a Greek mythological creature whose exter external characteristics include the body of a lion and the head of a woman and sometimes the bird wings of a bird. She would give her victims a riddle and if they failed to solve it, she would devour them instantly. 
<laughs> you can search for Sphinx on Wikipedia for more information. I'm... Oh, wait. Arachnade, the best weaver in the world, and the world above, and the world below. Oops, she did it again. Yes. Well, first of all, Arachne's supernatural form is a result of her committing hubris. Once upon a time, she used to be an ordinary girl with a remarkable talent for weaving. However, as, her, she, as she watched her talent gain in knowledge, the attention she received got to her. She started boasting that she was, could weave better than the goddess Athena herself. As you can imagine, Athena got pretty pissed. Uh, you know... It's not always good to say you're better than a god. Especially mythology, like mythology god, like Pantheon gods. Because you go back and you come back to your family and your head, you got that like the head of a stink bug. Because you were talking shit. <laughs> it's like, well, you talking shit, we'll make you smell like it. Do stink bugs actually smell like it? I don't know, my nose hasn't been working in ages. I can't really tell when one stinks. I hate looking at them. They freak me out. She approached Arachne in the form of an elderly lady and advised her to apologize to Athena, aka herself. Her girl Arachne wouldn't have it, so she challenged Athena to a weaving competition. Athena removed her disguise and the two competed against each other. Well, I bet you can get imagine who was the winner of that one was. Well, if you play Smite, it's clear who the winner was. I mean, why on earth would you compete against a god? I know, right? If you're familiar with Greek mythology, you probably already know that the Greek gods don't let mortals who commit hubris off easily. Thus, Arachne was turned into a half-human, half-spider being. Fun fact, in Greek, Arachne means spider. You can search Arachne on Wikipedia for more information. I'm Monty, which is short for Manticore. Oh wait, I'm Manty, which is short for M Mart Manticore. I'm sorry, I'm not reading right. And you're gonna hear me roar. Okay. Truth, he was uh, practicing that all day. All day. Do you want to learn more about Manticore? Yes, we're doing all of them. The Manticore is a Persian mytho mythological creature. It is external characteristics include the body of a red lion, a human head with three rows of sharp teeth, and sometimes bat-like wings and the tail of a dragon. Mm. You don't want to mess with this creature, or it will eat you whole on the spot, leave it no trace behind. The Manticore can actually commit the perfect crime. <laughs> you can search Manticore on Wikipedia for more. He's proud of that. <laughs> Who's to say he hasn't committed any crimes? I'm Pan, and I live for music, dancing, drinking, and pretty girls. See, I already forgot the words I gave him earlier. Whatever. Seriously, over here being a perfect example of the latter. Do you want me to turn the rest of you and... Do you want me to turn the rest of you into a goat as well? Because I'm sure you know I can. Forget I said anything. Why don't you introduce yourself with your first name, lover boy? <sighs> it's Peter. <laughs> yeah, my parents had a weird sense of humor. Yeah, let's do that. In Greek mythology, Pan is the god of the wild. He has the body of a human and the legs and horns of a goat. He is the party animal of Greek mythology and is often associated with sexuality. You can find him chasing after nymphs, or any pretty girl for that matter. You can search for Pan on Wikipedia for more information. A centaur, also known as the high horse, they tell you to get off. The centaur is a Greek mythological creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. They are known for being ruthless fighters. You can search for Centaur on Wikipedia for more information. I'm Maduna. Oh, <laughs> wait, not Maduna. Medusa. Let's <laughs> start that over. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Medusa, Queen of Death Stairs. Medusa is a Greek mythological monster who has snakes instead of hair on her head. Just glance at her eyes is enough to turn you into a stone statue for the rest of your life. She was beheaded by Per. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, sh I should have read that in the first thing. I just skimmed through. I like, I didn't even click on them. I didn't. I only clicked on the ones that like I genuinely didn't know about. I was like, oh, Medusa, I know you got turned into a thing. And I was like, <laughs> I called it a day, so I skipped hers. <laughs> 
You can search Medusa on Wikipedia for more information. All the information about the characters was taken from Wikipedia. What about Chelsea and Baby Doll? Yeah. Oh, those are the humans of the group. Or human messengers, if you like. So that's why they're not in uniforms? <sighs> not exactly. Flashback! Look, I know what you said about the uniform thingy, but what would it matter if I just wore a hot pink shirt under the jacket? What about pink shoes? You won't even notice them. You're not even wearing pink shoes to begin with. Hot pink stockings, last offer. Pink jewelry. The point of the uniform is that everyone wears the exact same thing. So no, you're not allowed to wear pink shirts, skirts, socks, shoes. I don't even want to see pink bra straps for that matter. You didn't say anything about hot pink though. What about pink panties? Fine, no uniforms for you. <laughs> Ow, my head. I'm gonna need a drink. And flashback. They're proud of that. See what we're dealing with? Even if they're not wearing uniforms, Baby Doll is a part of the Angelics and Chelsea is a part of the de Demonics for no specific reason. Why do you need human messengers though? It has to do with the mes missions we're carrying out, about which we will be informed soon. What do you need in order to become a human messenger? Oh, it takes skill, commitment, loyalty, maturity. 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 Hey, Harrier, how is that list of potential human messengers candidates going? Let's see. Here we have the kids with the wealthiest families listed from top to bottom. Okay, we have the resources covered. Now, what other criteria should we take into consideration? Popularity, obviously. I mean, if we want to get humans to go with our plans, we need to approach them through someone with influence. Good thinking. Just say it takes money and popularity and call it a day. <laughs> Don't lie about needing maturity. Makes sense. But wait. What is the goal of this secret organization, anyway? Every supernatural organization since the beginning of science fiction has always had the same goal. Fighting. Against who? See, this is where the title starts making sense. Basically, our main mission is to fight against the two super supernatural tribes that have been mercilessly taken over teen books and movies. Alright, bonus points if you can guess what tribes they're talking about. let you make a guess. Uh, but I already went, I did the first choice already, so let's go down to the choice. Let's do this one. No, not popular enough for such a great cause. Although we do agree that they both fall under the supernatural category. So? Vampires and werewolves, obviously. I actually did notice that there are none among us. And there never will be. They can take over the entire fantasy genre, but they're not touching Elysian fields. And your job is to ensure that. But aren't vampires and werewolves at war with each other? They can they are, and they wish to keep it that way. You see, they want to be the only two supernatural tribes left on the planet, and their goal is to be able to fight each other endlessly. Endlessly? What about winning? It doesn't work that way. It's a mutually beneficial war. Mutually beneficial? How do you think they manage to keep their place in fantasy works? By constantly being at war, they manage to establish a stable base for any plot that you can think of. Take Twilight. A love triangle between a human, a vampire, and a werewolf set in the middle of an ongoing war between vampires and werewolves. Vampire Diaries? A love triangle between a human, two vampire brothers set in the middle of an ongoing war between vampires and werewolves. 
Shiki. Everyone killing everyone killing everyone else in the middle of an ongoing war between Actually vampires and werewolves were allies in that one. Damn anime, always ignoring the conventions. As long as it's not their own conventions, that is. Love you. I think I get it, but when did this whole thing start? You know, vampires versus werewolves versus everyone else? Oh, it started when vampires and werewolves became hot teenagers. They were pretty cool before that. Not good enough! What do you mean? Every big war between tribes needs an origin story. And this one is no exception. Fine, if you must know. It started with... I went remoter last time. Let's go, Romance. Flashback! Look, I don't even care that you're a Draculette and I'm a Mon Fang. Oh, it's different. I don't even care that you're a vampire, the princess of vampires and I'm the prince of werewolves. The only thing I care about is you and our endless love for each other. You're right. I don't give a shit about the dangers of ending a mutually beneficial war or any of the BS my dad has tried to brainwash me with. My love for you is strong enough to prevent our tribe's fall from the popular culture. My thoughts exactly, babe. We're all still gonna rule our fantasy works, but this time, the base for all their plots will be love, not war. What a brilliant my idea, my darling. Now, romance works involving our tribes will basically promote permitted love in a world of unconditional love. Lord of my life, you're a genius. Come over here so I can show the world how much I love you. <laughs> Where the fuck is that music coming from? What's up, love birds? What the fuck are you? Let's see, I have horns, pink hair, a bow cut, dark lipstick, a cop uniform, a cute butt, and awesome shoes. <laughs> yes, he's in this one too! <laughs> I guess you could call me the supernatural originality police. What is this guy's deal? I don't want any deals with you, basic Taylor Lardner call from Kubok. <laughs> I don't want any deals with you, basic Taylor Lautner cardboard cutout. What do you want then? I don't want anything. I'm happy the way I am. Good, then you can go back to the mental institution you escaped from and let my love and I continue from where we started. Wish I could. But unfortunately for both of us, I'm on a mission. Let me guess, mission cockblock. More well, like shock block, because it looks like this lovely lady over here was expecting a cock, and something tells me she wouldn't find. What? Something tells me she. I'm sorry. Let me read that again. I'm... <laughs> I was taken back. More well, like shock block, because it looks like this lovely lady over there was expecting a cock, and something tells me she wouldn't find any in it that direction. Wow. <laughs> Now, the real reason I'm here is putting an end to this cliche BS. And I plan to do that by taking this gorgeous lady over here for a ride. She would never. Ah! <laughs> You're not even riding anything! <laughs> she said, bye! It all makes sense now. <laughs> okay, that was better <laughs> than the murder one. I actually thought when I chose the murder one the first time, I actually thought it was going to be a vampire to wear fighting over someone, but that was so much better than what I thought it was going to be. So, because the murder one was like, oh, the vampire and a werewolf. The, wolf, the vampire was a guy this time. And so, <laughs> they're about to fight each other because of the war and whatnot. And then the dude comes in, kills, uh, kills him, and then I guess the werewolf declares like other supernaturals enemies and whatnot <sighs> one more question if everyone here is a supernatural what the hell am I 
What kind of supernatural being are you? Find out in Teen Movie Gone Wrong, Episode 3. <laughs> See you next time, CK. <laughs> And that is the end of episode episode two. This one, this video was shorter because I was rambling in my other one, so that's good. <laughs> I love that romance thing. I'm so happy I did. I chose different options for this video. <laughs> See, so everything was still new for me. Good. That's perfect. <laughs> so I guess that's. This has been episode two. I'll see you in episode three when we find out which. Uh, well, I know what we are. But viewers don't know what we are. Well, the Arthur knows what we are. Well, sort of, sort of, sort of knows what we are. But the viewer will find out what we are. But until then, you can make a guess. Maybe we're a witch or a fairy or a C Cthulhu. We could be a Cthulhu or... <laughs> Or a Loch Ness monster, or an alien, or a mentally and financially stable millennial. She moves out to a fact of room. It's the details, those accessories. Oh, I